Hi, thank you for watching this video on hip arthritis and hip replacement. I'm Dr. Joe Gundusky. I'm a fellowship trained hip and knee replacement surgeon. I would like to help you understand what is entailed in a hip replacement procedure. This talk is designed for general informational purposes only. You should discuss your particular care with me or your surgeon. First, let's make sure you understand what hip arthritis is and why your surgeon might be discussing a hip replacement procedure with you. Joints are lined with cartilage. Cartilage is an incredibly smooth, natural tissue that ensures motion between the joint has very little friction. It is like a Teflon coating on the ends of your bones. You are born with thick cartilage. It is a tissue that cannot grow back or repair itself well if injured. When this is worn out, the joint is arthritic. Let's look at the x-rays and get an idea of the progression of arthritis. The space between the bones of the joint, called the joint space, is where cartilage lives. It gets thinner and thinner with arthritis progression, decreasing the joint space. Look at the image on the left. This is a healthy hip. Notice the preserved space between the bones. And on the right, notice the complete loss of that space. This is a severely arthritic hip. The bones are now rubbing directly on each other. This causes pain and swelling. Arthritis is a progressive disease, meaning that it starts out slowly and gradually gets worse over time. The only things that can slow down the progression of osteoarthritis, the most common kind of arthritis, is modifying your activities, keeping weight down, and low impact aerobic exercise. In addition, other things may be tried to decrease the pain from arthritis. These include things like the use of braces, anti-inflammatory medicines, therapy, walking aids such as canes and walkers, and occasionally injections. These help control the pain from arthritis but cannot stop arthritis progression. Once a joint is severely arthritic, the options becoming living with the joint and the discomfort and managing the pain as possible or a hip replacement. Here is a model showing a normal hip and an arthritic hip. The areas where bones meet in a joint should be covered by healthy cartilage. This is represented by the light blue surfaces on the models. When the cartilage is eroded and breaks down, this is arthritis. Cartilage is a very special, frictionless surface. Once it is gone, it does not grow back and arthritis develops. When the hip joint is severely destroyed, a hip replacement is a very reliable way to take away pain and increase your function. In a hip replacement, we place components to recreate the ball and socket of the hip joint. Pain from arthritis goes away because the bones are no longer rubbing against each other. The surgery is very reliable at taking hip pain away. Overall, hip replacement surgery is one of the most successful surgeries ever invented by mankind and has one of the highest patient satisfaction ratings of any major surgery. Hip replacement surgery is performed by making an incision in the skin to access the hip joint. The arthritic ends of the bones are removed and the components are placed. There are different surgical approaches used to get to the hip joint. The anterior and posterior are most common. I prefer the anterior approach in most patients because I find it is easier for patients to recover from. The incision for this approach is on the outer side of the front of the hip. The posterior approach is performed through an incision on the side and back of the hip. Look at my presentation on anterior approach hip replacement for details on that specific minimally invasive approach. The component placement process is similar between approaches. The arthritic hip socket is reamed with a circular reamer and a cup is placed. A special liner is placed in this cup. Next, the arthritic ball of the femur is removed and a component is placed within the femoral bone itself. A special ball is placed on this component and this recreates the ball and socket hip joint. Hip replacement is a significant surgery. We do everything possible to prevent complications, but just like driving your car on the highway carries some risk, so does a major surgery. These risks are not all inclusive but in general, the major risks that can cause serious problems after replacement surgery are blood clots, infection, and heart and lung problems. Blood clots can form in the legs and move to the lungs. This can be fatal. This happens extremely rarely after joint replacement surgery, and we use blood thinners and early mobilization, among other things, to prevent them. 
Infection after replacement surgery is problematic because bacteria can cling to the replacement components and be impossible to eradicate without surgery to take the components out. This, of course, is another major operation that can really affect the outcome of replacement surgery. We do many things to prevent infection. Most importantly, we use sterile technique and antibiotics during and after surgery. Rarely, heart problems, lung problems, and strokes can occur around surgery. Prior to any joint replacement surgery, we do many things to ensure your health is optimized and that it is reasonable to proceed with a low risk of these significant events occurring. There are multiple other risks that are possible, but these are the most concerning. You can discuss all of the risks with me or your surgeon. After you have decided a replacement is right for you, it helps to have an idea of what you'll be in for in terms of the process and recovery. First, you discuss the issue with your surgeon and pick a date for surgery. You will be sent for some lab work, sometimes x-rays, and sometimes to meet with a medical doctor to ensure you are healthy enough for the surgery. A class is often offered that you can attend to learn about the entire process. You will then show up for your surgery. The surgery itself will usually take an hour or two, but you will be getting ready and recovering for much of the day. Some replacement surgeries allow for discharge on the day of surgery. Others require a stay of one to two days. I always encourage people with someone to help at home to go there instead of a rehab center after their surgery. People are usually more comfortable in their homes and the infection risk is lower. If you do not have any help, you may need to go to a rehab center and the hospital staff will work with you to make sure you go to a place that's right for you. Therapy starts immediately after surgery and continues at home. I usually tell people that do not have more physical jobs that they should plan on three to four weeks off after surgery. Hopefully I have helped you understand hip arthritis and replacement. You should discuss your specific case with me or your surgeon to help decide what treatment is best for you. Don't be afraid to ask, what would you do if I were your mother, father, sister, or brother? That's a good way to get a good opinion, and it keeps us on our toes. Please come see me in clinic and see my other information and videos on this site.